Hey, what's up, y'all? Ashelot here. Welcome back to Memory Gaming. We are back with another installment of Elder Ring itself. This is our very first build showcase, one of the very many build showcases I'm going to do in the channel itself, dedicated to the Elder Ring itself. And before we proceed on the showcasing how the build is constructed, I wanted to showcase you guys um, different form of boss battles with different form of mechanics, from overland boss battles, from Demigod, just name it. So you have an overland tendency and feeling how this build is actually constructed because this build is extremely overpowered. That is the most uh, well built dexterity build you can find in the game itself. If you're a dexterity player and like this playstyle, you'll be fast, you'll be versatile, and you'll be very strong. That is the build for you. But before we can proceed, of course, if you did like this content after everything that will be showcasing you right now, do not forget to press a like, a comment down below, and subscribe yourself to the channel to keep yourself posted to everything as we do with Elder Ring uh, related content, build tips and tricks, works you left and right, just, just name it. You want to watch the channel to be if it comes to Elder Ring contents or any other games because we're also a variety type of gamer. Anyway, sit back, relax, and watch this beautiful intro of different boss battles themselves. So you have an overall tendency what is the well known build of Elder Ring actually looks like and it's gonna play like the moment you construct this for yourself itself. Enjoy. What's up y'all, Ashenot here, hopefully you guys liked the intro video and if you did you're probably wondering yourself by now how the hell I constructed this build because this build melts enemy as you saw for yourself extremely fast and extremely easy and it doesn't matter if you're going to a new game plus uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, no matter how many times you want to do this game and uh, you want to play with a dexterity build that is 100% based on dexterity form of gameplay that is the build for you. Um, I only use one incantation as you saw probably and that's the only reason I use it because it buffs my stats even higher It's only from a buffs I use one incantation otherwise I use any any form of magic at all 
Uh, so what do we actually have? So I'm gonna go to the equipments, the stats, and of course the uh, the incantation I use and why I use them. At least the one I use. So form of equipment that I have, I'm using the Blood Ushitano. I'm both hand, I'm off hand, I'm a main hand. That means the starting class that I started, of course, is the Samurai class. And the form of the Ashes of War that I applied in the port of Ushitana, as you can see, is not only Sopuku, but I also added the Ashes of War and Bleed effects. Why? Because this causes a loss of bleed for 83%. I start every single fight that I do with Ushitana first, and I try to finish it with the Hand of Melania. The Hand of Melania, you, you receive that after you beat Melania, a little bit more end game. Um, towards the end of the game itself, you will receive this weapon. All three weapons are completely maxed out in form of a, a leveling up of the weapon itself. And I add every single thing with the claw mark scenes are as well maxed out completely in form of stats. The reason I use the Mark's Claw because I only use one incantation and I have is easy accessible for me. Um, yeah, for a simple fact, I'm not a magic caster, I'm not interested in magic, I'm more a melee based combatant, but I only use one form of magic that costs. Um, that buff my weapons uh, scandalously high. A form of a uh, stylisman that I use, I use the Lord of Blood ex Exultation. Um, what it does actually increases my attack power every single time of a blood loss. I'm using a lot of bleed effects, so I'm stacking my bleed extremely, extremely high. And thanks to this, it can be buffed even higher, I want 20% extra uh, bleed effect I get thanks to this. I'm using the Claw Mark. Um, enhances my jump attack i do a lot of jump attack as you can saw the intro video as well um, so this really makes sure not only give me the chance to uh, stagger my enemy i'm a boss is very fast my these a shit ton of damage so i do advise you guys to always try to do as much as possible jump attacks because that's really where your dps is actually gonna gain the most out of um, things to the jump attack i'm used the what what down long source seal um, what, what this actually does it greatly uh, raises my attribute, attribute points um, thanks to this I have the attribute points that I have right now thanks to this seal I'm, I'm able to use the millennia for example because it's bringing my strength for example to 17 uh, points but not only that it's also bringing my figure to 64 and it brings my, my dexterity to 85 thanks to this it's really buffed my stats extremely high so i can be able to use these weapons uh, more easily so i can put more points into where i find this quite important form of survivability and the gameplay mechanics that i use and the last not least that i use is the floor canvas tentacle because it greatly increased the potency of my incantation i only use one incantation about when you want to bring the max out of that incantation but that's not only it only for gear sets that I use, I don't use this gear set not only from the aesthetic look of it because it fits perfectly in the form of uh, the running playstyles and the playstyle of my character and the lore behind I created this character but the very first thing I actually um, chose and selected very carefully is the white mask every single um, bleed damage effect that you do doesn't matter what it is, if you truly want to make the best out of it you need to have the white mask in you because the white mask increases your bleed uh, effect by another 10% it stacks with everything that I have, my Ujitana, my, my Talisman, my Lord Talisman, everything it stacks together. And of course my incantation as well, all of that is all stacked together. What it does actually, it raises my, again my attack power every single time I have a blood uh, loss, and another 10%. So my attack power is increased again another 10% thanks to this. Thanks to the mask, my attack power is increased. Thanks to my Lord of Blood and Talisman, my attack power is increased. My, thanks to my Ujitana, I'm increasing my blood loss extremely fast and I'm stacking this extremely extremely fast all of this stacks together so easily and so thanks to this I'm melting my enemies extremely extremely fast that's why my uh, DPS is so high in the moment I use uh, my seppuku and my both weapons but that's not only eight guys the reason I use the incantation that I have right now where is it to be very fast on it there he is. Fire Deadly Sin. Fire Deadly Sin, what it does actually, you saw it, it creates a fire uh, blaze around me. But the thing is, the DPS out of this Fire Deadly Sin by itself is a nice thing to have. It's very powerful, very potent. But what, the reason why I use it, because it buffs my weapons and my incantation and my bleed 
scandalously high. You will count it another 20% to 30% above I increases my two, my blood loss, my blood increase, my blood build, thanks to this incantation. The moment I have this and I have seppuku activated, uh, my blood uh, mitigation or my blood uh, damage effect is increasing another 20% again thanks to this uh, fire deadly sin. So I always make sure that I have this activated, I have my seppuku activated and I start my fight my Uchidana first to actually melt my enemy and afterwards I use my hand of Melania only I have an opening to the boss itself. Hand of Melania is a very strong weapon but you probably saw in the entry itself um, this, the opening of this weapon itself has a three form of combo attack but it has a very brief moment, the hand of Melania actually is very, I could say, uh, vulnerable. So the boss can stun you, it can hit you, it can one shot you. So we need to use the hand of Melania only and only a key moment that you find now you have an opening. You can execute the boss, otherwise you're going to be very, very uh, uh, squishy and very uh, vulnerable. So that's why I always start the fight with Blood Yushitana and I finish with Hannah Melania. All of this thanks to my incantation that I use, the mask that I have and this, the talisman I use and everything is buffed together perfectly to really max out the, the damage that I'm having right now. A form of uh, a mimic, a form of Ashen that I use, I use the mimic tier because it copies my build completely. There's a very strong Ash uh, because if you have a strong, very strong build, it copies your build completely so it's a very uh, versatile very strong and very survival ash so that's why i use a form of a flask of morning physics i using uh, the oblin uh, leap here um, it's before every single fight i always make sure i have this uh, flask of morning physics always activated but it increases my damage negation so for the boss fights if you enter a boss fight and the boss fight does the mechanics it doesn't one shot me thanks to this it creates like an extra shield around me gives me the opportunity even i'm stunned for one reason to reassess the situation and then uh, to buff myself and then proceeding to the fight itself um, then i use the stone bob crack tier and temporary makes the stance break easier so it increases my op opportunity to stun the enemies and stun the bosses uh, so i can do my visceral attack to, to them much faster thanks to this and uh, this is what i use for my uh, flask of wandering physics itself and uh, for my stats internally thanks to that um, i have yeah, i have to calculate i using the the val the it's called the Radagon Sword Seal. This buffs my stats extremely, extremely high. Um, if I do not activate it, I can show you. If I take it out, my stats a little bit differently, as you can see. So thanks to this, my stats, I have an, a staggering 64 points into uh, figure, 20 points into mind, because I do use my Millennia. Uh, Quite often, um, every source pool it comes for things to that. Uh, Hands of Melina comes to my mind, it's uh, things to FP. I, 25 points into endurance, 15 points into strength. I use 85 points into dexterity, 9 points into intelligence, 19 points into faith, and 10 points into arcane. All of this has been increased and, and increased significantly. To think this, this talisman, of course. Thanks to this talisman, I can wield the Melina quite easier. If I take that away, you can see my stats a little bit differently. Then I have uh, 59 points into Vigor, 20 points uh, to Mind, 20 points into Endurance, 12 points into Strength, 80 points into Dexterity, 9 into Intelligence, 19 into Faith, and 10 into Arcane. But thanks to that, I cannot use Melina anymore. So that's why I have this activated. So now I can use Melania much easier without I have to allocate any single thing or change my build of any other way so then make sure I have a um, soul level of a rune level of 150 with the rune capacity that I have above a million souls of runes I have in my position and that's it guys uh, before we finish I'm going to showcase you guys another boss battle that is known within the community itself or one of the hardest boss battles in the game itself so I give you an overall tendency what this uh, boss with this build can do so you really satisfy that this build is truly truly one of a kind now uh, within this community itself and if you did and don't forget to press the like comment down below and subscribe yourself to the channel 
if you have any form of question you can always read me on discord of course and uh, or in the comments down below if you have any form of builds that you want to know or wanted me to do for you or do want to look at, look up for you hybrid builds or any builds just let me know on discords or on the comments down below i'm going to check it for you guys and see if it's a viable build and do a new, new game plus or beyond it there anyway i'm going to show you guys another boss fight i say sit back relax and enjoy and of course i'm going to explain to you guys how do i approach the boss fight itself again so you can see for yourself and once again i tell you this is supposed to be the hardest boss uh, according to the community yourself but i fully disagree about it but whatever enjoy And that's it guys, as you can see this is super easy boss and it's, at least I could say this became a very super easy boss. And with this build every single thing melts extremely easy. I like usually if you do like this content do not forget to press a like, a comment down below. And subscribe yourself to the channel so you definitely don't miss out on anything that is Elder Ring content related or just anything that is game related. Because that's your gaming channel to be. Like I said before, if you have any form of question, you can always hit me on Discord, the comments down below, or any form of social media pages that is written in the description. Yourself. If you have any question of any build that you want to see, you want to test for yourself, if you form yourself of ability, like I mentioned before, uh, let me know on the comments down below, or on Discord, us, uh, or on Discord itself. It's easier just come and hit me on Discord, uh, just ask me, yeah. Uh, what you want and i'm always uh, there to respond so with best more abilities of course um yeah hope i can see you on the next builds and the next playthrough and next step and trick so let's uh let's play walk through just name it everything that has to do with eldering or uh games generally i'm your host Ashlord itself also known as memnon say so thank you for chilling and for listening with me during this uh, um, overall explanation of my very first builds of many of Eldering itself and hopefully I can see you on the next ones itself stay safe out there say uh, memory and out one love always peace ciao ciao